So, there I was on Monday morning, swimming in an ocean pool, as I try and do most mornings, proud of myself for keeping up the habit and the exercise in the chills of winter. And now I discover I didn't really have anything to be proud of at all. Because it turns out a climate change mob in the US has declared that Monday was the hottest day for the planet in all of history. Yeah, the so-called National Centres for Environmental Prediction reckons the global average temperature on Monday broke the record set in 2016 by 0.16 degrees Fahrenheit, apparently. Now, you can get alarmed about this stuff if you like, and that's certainly what our own Climate Council want you to do. Take a look at this hysterical take on Twitter. They really do want to scare us, don't they? Me, I'd be very sceptical about the methods employed here. How long have they been deploying them? What do they know about average global temperatures 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago? What about 1,000 years ago? Was there a day 1,000 years ago hotter on average than last Monday? I'd want to know more about their margin of error. I'd also want to know a bit about their scientific indifference or the evangelism at play because... Never forget the climate gate emails. And it's probably just a coincidence, isn't it, that uh, this happens when the Northern Hemisphere is in summer and experiencing heat waves, rather than when it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, it wouldn't be very effective telling Europe, North America and Asia that it's the hottest day ever when they're in winter, would it? But, you know, we watch and we wait and we take all of the alarmism on board and we follow the science closely even while teal politicians in this country, like Allegra Spender, tweet about how somehow Australia can fix all this by crushing even more families and businesses with an even faster switch to the impossible goal of a fully renewable energy system. This is an unholy mix of both pontification and futility, isn't it? I think it's the lack of logic that so frustrates me, the inability to deal with the practical world as it is. Instead, it's all about ideology and virtue signalling from people who don't fret over their power bills, they don't have to worry about paying their power bills, and they don't either, they don't have to worry about wind turbines and transmission lines being built in their neighbourhoods. These are people who can afford to have a Tesla and a Range Rover in the garage and they don't have to worry about their business or industry being able to employ them in the future either. I mean, have a look at this clip from the Climate Council trying to tell families in this country this year who are struggling with the cost of living, trying to tell them that renewables are not the problem but the solution. So if you're worried about running your heating this winter and you think it's going to break the bank, then have you considered renewable energy? You see, things like hydro energy, solar or even wind are readily available here in Australia. And of course, the more we use it and the more it's in our system, the more affordable it will become. Renewable energy really is Australia's permanent bill buster. My goodness me, <laughs> the opposite of reality pushed to you by the Climate Council. And sure, if you believe that, I've got an election promise to cut your power bills by $275 a year to sell you. And check this out. Now they're selling carbon neutral water. Never mind it comes in a plastic bottle and the most likely delivered thanks to diesel powered trucks. It is carbon neutral. I just can't wait to get me a bottle of carbon-neutral, organic, vegan water. I just better not put it in the fridge and destroy its carbon-neutral status. Look, it's nice to know, though, that we're not the only ones amazed by all these contradictions and this lunacy. I saw some sense today from the great climate expert, Professor Judith Curry, who I've been lucky enough to interview in the past. She's drawn attention to the problem of waste disposal when it comes to the blades from wind turbines. We know wind turbines are going to need to be replaced every 15 to 20 years. Sometimes the blades need to be replaced even more often. So thousands of them, countless thousands of tonnes of them, are already going into landfill, sometimes illegally. And that's not, this is not just about metal and steel, but this is about plastics and fibreglass, 
and other toxins, creating another environmental problem. So Professor Curry has wondered on Twitter, why isn't anyone concerned about real pollution anymore? Global warming and the renewable energy mandate has unfortunately trumped these concerns. She's right, isn't she? Whatever you think about the global warming debate, real pollution is a real problem. And most environmentalists seem to be distracted trying to distill everything into a climate change fear-mongering event instead of focusing on waste, disposable, waste disposal, um, habitat destruction, feral animals and water pollution. Anyway, I suppose don't forget that in 2018, Greta Thunberg tweeted a scientific prediction that all of humanity would be wiped out if we didn't stop using fossil fuels within five years. Those five years happened to run out last month, by the way. So either the alarmists are right and we might as well all just give up now or we need to be very sceptical about the hysteria and focus on practical and sensible attitudes in caring for our environment.